5 seconds to go. Start. The single judge referring to the allegations of unauthorized advances beyond discretionary powers or without the sanction of head office held them to be gross misconduct. Further, the court observed that the charges were specific and the allegations mentioned in the charge sheet were detailed though relevant provisions of the service code were not mentioned. Therefore, the allegations detailed in the charge sheet constituted gross misconduct governed by clause 22 4a of the service code. Accordingly, the single judge had commanded that if this misconduct is proved in a validly conducted inquiry, I see no reason to find fault with the bank if dismissal is the punishment that is considered appropriate by them. The intra court appeal WA number 2052 of 2007 by the appellants was dismissed by the division bench of the High Court of Kerala at Ernakulam wide judgment dated 9th December 2008. They agreed with the single judge that clause 229A of chapter 8 was violated as the respondent was not allowed to be defended by a representative of a registered bank employees union association. Interpreting the clause, the division bench observed that the article the was missing before the bank employees in the said clause which indicates that the union association referred to therein was not only regarding employees of the bank itself namely the bank of Cochin and would therefore include employees union association of other banks also. As the respondent was entitled to be represented by a representative of a union or association of bank employees, his prayer to be represented by Mr. F. B. Chrysostom should have been accepted. The bench rejected the contention of no prejudice by observing that this was only an assertion by the bank's counsel. Further, the principles of natural justice were incorporated in the service code itself which the authorities were bound to follow strictly. As the authorities had not followed the procedure prescribed, it would be for the appellants to prove that by violating the procedure, no prejudice was in fact caused. That apart, the division bench, upon perusal of the proceedings and findings of the inquiry officer, felt that prejudice was caused to the respondent. They observed that an experienced lawyer had conducted the inquiry and the presenting officer was also a lawyer conversant with the procedure. Noticing that the respondent had retired, it was observed that if the rules permit, the bank would be at liberty to continue the disciplinary proceedings from the stage it had been invalidated. However, if the rules do not permit such inquiry, the respondent will be entitled to 
all benefits consequent to his illegal termination. We begin our discussion by reproducing clause 229A of the service code which reads the procedure in such cases shall be as follows. Stop. 